the entire cabinet is sharing in this report and verbally sharing in this report will be uh, Deb Heisler-Cato and Greg Myers. I invite you to turn to page 57 in your conference workbook. And as you make your way to uh, that page, I invite you to watch this video. My brothers and sisters, the cabinet of the Susquehanna Conference believes we are supposed to run. We are called to be different. We're called to be passionate. We're called to be radical as we live the mission of making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. As we continue to live into the reality of the Susquehanna Conference, we've wrestled with the purpose of the annual conference. Because of some great work by many people, you, the annual conference, last year, clearly identified and affirmed by your vote the purpose of our annual conference that is threefold. First, to train and deploy transformational leaders. Second, to resource our local churches with tools and best practices for effective 21st century disciple making. And th third, lifting up a covenant covenantal connection for mission and ministry beyond the local church. Over the last two years, the cabinet has been wrestling, as I said earlier, with how the role of superintending fits within not just the 21st century, but within this purpose that we've established as an annual conference. In that discussion, we have realized that the ministries of training leaders to be transformational and resourcing congregations for effectiveness are not carried out with excellence, given the current expectations of the superintendency. Superintendents spend too much time dealing with the issues of ineffectiveness in pastoral leadership and resistance of churches to the change required of vital congregations. Maybe we've been forced there. Maybe it's become easier to stay there. However, it's our desire to change. It's our desire to lead rather than merely manage. It's our desire to focus our energies and our gifts as superintendents on strengths rather than weaknesses, on health rather than dysfunction. It is also our desire as conference superintendents to work collaboratively out of our individual and corporate strengths. A recommendation to reduce the number of districts to seven may seem at first to increase the burden of management. However, we believe that the reduction of districts will allow us to realign our resources and then to redirect our energies, thus providing better administrative systems and more importantly, freeing superintendents from the task of management to the critical roles of training, equipping, and leading churches in their efforts to make more disciples. By reducing districts and realigning financial resources, we believe we can accomplish the following. One, realignment of resources will provide opportunities for more efficient administrative support. Through the elimination of three superintendent positions, we will be able to redirect funds to increase support for the necessary managing and administrative needs in the new districts. By first increasing the weekly hours of the district administrative assistance from 20 hours to 30 hours a week. Secondly, to help superintendents focus more time and energy on training and deploying transformational leaders 
and resourcing local congregations, we envision creating the position of assistant to the district superintendent. This position will utilize other elders to carry out some of the areas of administration and management tasks as appropriate. This may include such responsibilities as assisting with charge conferences, assisting churches in transition, administrative duties, and others that you can think of. We envision the assistant to the district superintendent being a 10 to 20 hour per week paid position. Elders serving in this ministry could be retired or could be active pastors who are able to commit time to this work in addition to their primary appointment. We have been in conversation with another annual conference that is currently utilizing this position in effective and successful ways. Secondly, we will create a full-time cabinet level position dedicated to leadership development, church vitalization, and new church starts, which will position us to provide our churches with more adequate resources for making disciples. This position would have administrative support in the form of a 30 hour per week administrative assistant and would continue to strengthen current strategies being utilized throughout the annual conference and to develop additional strategies to help us train transformational leaders and equip churches to make more disciples. Realign resources would also allow us to provide significant funding for transformational ministry tools and programming. Thirdly, even with the significant changes noted above, which are highly missional in purpose. The plan would enable us to have a modest reduction in the cost of conference plan for ministry, returning resources to the local church for use in ministry and mission. While we cannot provide a specific savings at this time, we have made a conservative estimate savings of 75,000 to $90,000. It is important to note that the Book of Discipline of the United Methodist Church 2008, paragraph 415-4, gives authority to the annual conference to set the number of districts and gives authority to the bishop to define district boundaries and to develop a comprehensive plan to more effectively fulfill the responsibilities of superintending. If the annual conference approves this plan, the cabinet will begin that work immediately and beginning this fall, we will provide opportunity for input from clergy and laity throughout the annual conference. 